we were here to talk about community-based services, and I wanted to add on to what Emily said, if I may be so bold, the LMEMCOs are also doing what they do for TBI as well, and it's just not in the title of the division. So I wanted to go ahead and get that little plug in there. Um, so, which way it goes? There it goes. Oh, okay. So, there we go, it all came up. Um, I am certainly not gonna read my slides to you. I'm gonna tell you how this company came to be. Our president, Helene Belos, was working, she's worked in TBI for 30 years as well. She was working in a TBI specific group home and felt that as people transition through, we set up a great discharge plan for people and it's the ideal plan. And whenever the spouse comes to pick that person up to discharge home, there are three kids in the car screaming they have to stop at the grocery store to pick up groceries, and there's the phone is ringing, and that discharge plan is out the window. So we needed to figure out a way, she needed to figure out a way to provide services in the community for people that are transitioning. Oh, I forgot I had these little, uh, I'm gonna put them all up there, okay. So, we do provide community case management services and community support services. This is functionally based. As a country, we put hundreds of millions of dollars into rehabilitation, which is important, very important, but then we send everybody home, they get a little bit of PTOT or ST, and then that's it. And we expect their families to become rehab professionals. And guys, it's not working, okay? It's not working. So Helene wanted to start this company to do that community support piece. Okay, um, we do provide services across the country, and you'll see a little bit of that. Um, we are presently working with, we are both vendorized by the VA, and we are working with Wounded Warrior Project their independence program is designed for traumatic brain injury. These are, each dot represents a warrior that we are serving across the US, over 600 warriors. Did they all come up? Ah, okay. So we take those skills that are learned in rehab and we make them real in their own home and community. This leads to independence and stabilization and cost savings. So Flo, having worked in prevention forever while she was at the division, knows that sometimes it's very difficult to demonstrate what you've prevented. That's something that we run into. If people have structure, consistency, repetition, and somebody to count on in their home and community, they're much less likely to have a readmission to a hospital of any sort, an acute care hospital or a mental health facility. So it's really cost savings. I'm gonna grab my water because I clearly dried up. So how do we do that? Our case managers go and do, okay, mental note, never do that again, okay. Our case managers go, they fly to wherever the client is and they do an in-depth home and community assessment. They generally stay for about a day and a half in that warrior's community. And from that assessment, and that includes the family because brain injury doesn't happen to one person, just like PTSD doesn't happen to just one person. It happens to the entire family. So we develop individualized goals. We have to educate the family. They've either learned it and forgotten it or they weren't able to absorb it when they were in the acute care hospital. And we have to develop short and long-term goals. Okay, oh, there was one more. 
advocacy. So of course, we're out there advocating for the warriors in their home community. Okay. Let me see how many of these there are before, before there we go. Okay, so these are the things that our case managers focus on whenever they see a new client. Um, and they're really the goals that the warriors tell us they want to work on. They want to get back to physical health and wellness. They want to be as independent as possible. They want to be emotionally regulated, in other words, have control of their emotions, but they often have difficulty with that. Over 50% of the warriors that we're serving also have PTSD or some other mental illness. And so we have to work as a team in the community the way we work as a team when you work in rehab. It's just that folks are a little more scattered and it takes some management of those resources. And of course, recreation. And then if there is a vocational goal, we certainly do work on that. If they're not able to return to work, we look for avocational or volunteering opportunities or something that, because people that have purpose definitely tell us they have a better quality of life. Okay. So after the case manager has done their entire assessment, I knew there was one more, okay. Um, we contract with a provider in their community, wherever that is. We're contracted with over 130 providers across the US. And these are the types of things that our community support specialists work with these clients on. They do have cognitive issues from their brain injury. Maybe they could manage all of the budgeting before. Now they need assistance with that sort of thing. So these are not we are not rehab providers, but everybody has a rehab background or a social work background that are case managers, and they take those rehab skills and make it real in their place that they are living. All right, so this is what really happens with TBI left untreated. Our folks get very depressed, they sit at home, they're not able to find purpose in their lives. We talk about the high incidence of veteran suicide. All of this, with their mental health treatment, with the other services that they're receiving, will give them a full life and help them. Folks with TBI often become isolated, and we need to stop that isolation circle. And I will say, it is their same community that they're going back to, so people say, well, they already know how to navigate that community. They don't know how to navigate that community with a cognitive impairment. And that's what we help them to do. Oh, there's another one. They pop up at the end. Two more, okay. So with Wounded Warrior Project, we have the luxury of staying with these warriors for a lifetime if they need that. Some people have left the independence program because they don't need that support anymore. They are still alums of Wounded Warrior Project, however, and they can come back into the program at any time if there is some sort of a crisis. So the community support that they get is what keeps them from having some type of a crisis. All right, so here's contact information. Helene is the president of our company. There's my contact information. I don't know how I did on time. Okay, I have brochures and cards up here. I w didn't get here early enough to distribute those around the table, but I appreciate you all having me.